Well, thank you very much for um, the kind invitation. Uh, my name is Steve Vistas. I'm a vascular surgeon from Athens Medical Center here in Greece. Uh, today, I have the great honor to present you a live in the box case with the new Indigo 12 friends uh, device with new lightning aspiration uh, system to treat Larry syndrome. It was a very challenging uh, case. Um, we, the patient uh, is now 50 years old male with severe claudication of both limbs and erectile dysfunction. Uh, in the comorbidities, he had an arterial hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, and he's a very active smoker. Um, in the clinical examination, he had no palpable plus, uh, pulses of the common femoral artery and uh, the peripheral uh, arteries. So um, we have performed the CT angiography and um, DSA and diagnostic angiography. You can appreciate that we have a complete occlusion of the uh, infrarenal abdominal aorta. Uh, we cannot see at all the external iliac artery at both sides, uh, as well as the hypogastric arteries. A very, very challenging case. Actually, uh, this case is a uh, gold standard. The gold standard for this case would be the open surgical bypass. And this is what we have also suggested to the patient. However, the patient is a house painter and he has to uh, lift uh, every day around 30 kilo weight uh, and he wanted to avoid any kind of, uh, let's say, a limitation regarding the weight and to avoid any hernia from the uh, open surgical procedure. So he asked to try at least an endovascular aortic repair. Um, I, and then that is what we have done. We decided to go for an endovascular first approach uh, as an exception in this case. Uh, and uh, you will see if actually the, the, uh, the decision was the right one. Um, we have used the indigo thrombectomy system in that case uh, for several reasons. The most important reason is due to the flexibility of the system, the tip directionality and further other advantages that we have to discuss later on. Actually, this is the old system that everybody knows with uh, different uh, catheters from 3F to 8F and the classic uh, pump. Um, the uh, advantages of this device is that you have a mechanical clot engagement with a separator that you have. Uh, you have a maximized aspiration power. You have the, gr the great advantage of tip directionality that allows you to remove thrombus that it is really well adherent to the uh, vessel wall. And we have an advanced tracking technology, even with the new catheters, we have more pushability uh, through difficult uh, lesions. Until now, we knew uh, that we have a system up to eight friends. This was the classical old one system with a, a side port, more or less the same. We have the switch on and on um, part where we could aspirate. Uh, however, we had an uncontrolled uh, blood loss with the old system because we couldn't see uh, at all if we are now uh, removing blood or thrombus or a combination of both. Now um, we have also we had also the, the main disadvantage that we couldn't uh, collect uh, the, the blood for further histological analysis, for example, in case of a paraneoplastic syndrome. Uh, so we had to uh, really uh, to throw away the, uh, the blood uh, and this was a main disadvantage of the old pump. Now with the new penumbra engine, we have a more powerful one touch maximum aspiration. We have a very easy setup and the nice thing, we have a light feedback uh, during the procedure and uh, with the integrated clot catcher, we have also the uh, possibility uh, to ascend uh, uh, the, uh, the clot for histological analysis. Moreover, we have now a really a revolution in the uh, thrombectomy and this is the lightning system uh, with uh, the uh, lightning 12 and lightning 7 catheters, really dedicated catheters with an amazing pushability and flexibility uh, and of course the ability to remove higher uh, amounts of uh, clot especially in these big vessels like the aorta or in the deep venue system for the lightning 12 system um, the big advantage of the lightning system is that you can really assess when you're removing blood and when you are really uh, stick inside the uh, the uh, clot and with this device we thought that we're gonna have a very safe uh, thrombectomy of this really, really very, 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 very challenging cases. We have decided here in the videos you will see to puncture ultrasound guided the uh, common femoral artery at both sides. And then we tried uh, for a retrograde recanalization uh, through a trailblazer support catheter and a V18 wire. Um, you will appreciate we have done loops. We have tried several things in order to go through this 
uh, thrombosis, you can appreciate that the hypogastric artery was patent at that time with a high grade stenosis, but we were not able to go from below. Then we did a puncture in the right axillary artery. Uh, we inserted 12 French seat and then an 8 French 90 centimeter uh, cook seat. And by this way, try to using a trailblazer and the support <coughs> that the 12 French uh, seat and then the 8 French seat um, added to the whole structure, we were able to penetrate uh, the proximal cap of the occlusion. You can see that we have a Berenstein catheter from the left side, the B18 wire from the right side, all of them unable to penetrate the lesion. And on the right side, you can appreciate that with the trade blazer and with the B18 wire, with careful rotation of the wire, we were able to get inside the uh, patent uh, right common uh, femoral artery. Then we did a through and through wire. You see the mosquito pulling out uh, the uh, B18 wire. And then we inserted the Manta closure device uh, in order to measure the right distance. Afterwards, we changed for a 12 French sith, uh, and then we inserted the lining 12 uh, system. It has a very nice uh, insertion uh, help and support uh, in order to uh, avoid any injury of the proximal tip. Uh, and then you can appreciate in order to avoid to uh, be to be to in avoid to avoid any uh, you know uh, loss of the wire. We went actually without the separator through the whole lesion, creating a first channel very effective first uh, thrombectomy with the 12 friends device. We had to do it also from the uh, left side here with a Bernstein catheter. We are rotating nicely the catheter and we are inserting in the open uh, aorta that we was that was um, actually achieved through the thrombectomy of the, uh, the CAT-12. Now we used uh, the uh, separator in order to remove now as much as possible from both sides I mean, from the right and the left, nice thing here, you have a nice separator, you have to do small movements, one centimeter outside, one centimeter inside the catheter, and then uh, by this way, you are, fragment, you are doing a fragmentation of the cloth, and at the same time, uh, due to the lighting system, you know exactly if you are removing clot or blood. Um, in that case, uh, you have also the tip directionality that gives you the opportunity to go uh, from the one side to the other to remove really uh, wall adherent thrombus. You see here how aggressive we go through the thrombus in order to have as much, as more, as, as effective as possible um, uh, removal of the clot. Here you can see the first result, and now again you see a very fibrous proximal cap uh, below the renal arteries and uh, now uh, the aorta is starting to getting uh, more patent. Now we wanted to protect uh, this embolization of the left renal artery during the syrup technique. So we inserted an eight French sieve, a rosin wire and a balloon. This was a 540 millimeter uh, admiral balloon catheter. We performed then a kissing balloon technique in order to start creating more lumen and to see what will happen with the clot if we're going to have a distal embolization, what, uh, how it looks like after the uh, first angioplasty. This was done with eight millimeter balloons. Uh, and now again, the first um, angiography, which shows actually uh, furthermore, furthermore opening of the aorta. We wanted to avoid to perform, a, to, to uh, place a balloon expandable stand at the level of the proximal abdominal aorta in order to avoid the proximal cap getting inside the renal arteries. So we decided to go for a cuff of, uh, from Gore. This actually is a cuff without super renal stand, a uh, very short, nice device uh, that was introduced through an eight friends uh, sieve. And this is the first result without any distal embolization. However, uh, we see a small fibrous cap, uh, a fibrous, uh, let's say, um, um, a fibrous flap, uh, but still was under control. Then we started with the syrup technique. Uh, this was a first uh, balloon expandable stand. Uh, and then we uh, use the measurement pigtail uh, catheter, the metric pigtail catheter, in order to be around uh, one, at least uh, uh, two centimeters above the uh, bifurcation, because as you can see with the big raft aortic balloons, the balloon is coming outside around two centimeters from the distal end of the, of the um, uh, stand. Then we opened around 70%, we uh, uh, deflated, and then again, we opened only the proximal part in order to create the syrup technique 
uh, we check that we were in the same lumen with both wires and then we starting uh, with the setup technique. You see here that we have to uh, cover a long distance up to the hypodastric artery, second B graft plus, and then we uh, performed also a small uh, stand for the uh, left hypodastric uh, artery. Uh, you, see, you have seen a small embolization in one of the branches of the left hypodactic artery was actually clinical, it was not relevant. We, we thought that uh, it, may, it would be very risky to uh, leave the right hypodactic artery closed, so we did everything uh, to open it from above, and then we did a mini setup technique with a big graft coronary for the, left, for the right hypodactic artery and a normal big graft for the right for the right external artery with a very nice result and the creation of a new bifurcation of the iliac artery on the right side. Then we place the uh, manta devices uh, from both sides and we close you uh, the artery. We see, however, that this fibrous flap went uh, inside the uh, left renal artery. So for this reason, it was unavoidable to uh, perform a balloon expanding standing of the uh, left renal artery. Uh, and uh, after that, we had a nice result without distal embolization. You see a small dissection uh, from the rosin wire, but this was uh, um, hemody hemodynamically not relevant. We use intraoperative IVUS to see that both stents are equally open and we have no crush uh, phenomenon at both stents. And this is the final result uh, with a very nice reconstruction of the aorta. Uh, now, uh, let's see some nice details. Duration was four hours. Volume of aspiration was 250 milliliters. No adverse events or perfusion was uh, actually present. And the length of stay was only two days. This is the CT reconstruction at uh, six months with a patent hypogastric artery at both sides, patent left renal artery, and of course, right renal artery, and a very good um, clinical result uh, and a happy patient at the end. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, regarding this live, the live uh, box uh, case, uh, the Indigo Lightning 12 is a unique device for large vessel aspiration. We have really a new kit on the block uh, that will, uh, it is really effective and uh, we have missed it uh, all these years. Um, the risk syndrome could be a good indication in a specific case like the one that I have uh, presented. The Lightning system provides a control aspiration without unnecessary blood loss and is friendly to the user. Uh, the basics, however, of the Indigo assisted aspiration needs to be followed also with the new devices that mean you have to be careful with the proximal tip you have to use the olive the separator you have to move to quick to move quickly uh, through the clock etc thank you very much for your attention <laughs>